weakening. Another sign of this government wanting to get down to work as soon as possible, the Commerce Ministry has floated a note asking for views on whether 100% foreign direct investment should be allowed in the defence sector. Technically, 100% FDI in defence is still possible, but that hasn't happened partly because defence public sector undertakings have steadfastly opposed extended FDI in defence. Others say that in the event of war, foreign arms manufacturers on Indian soil can simply stop providing weaponry if there are sanctions and we would be in a huge bind. These are all fears. What's the truth? Joining us, Sambit Patra with us, Sanjay uh, Jha of the Congress Party also with us and uh, Ajay Shukla, uh, defense analyst, editor and a former colleague also uh, with us this evening. Uh, Sanjay, the Congress Party has made the point earlier on today that even when the UPA was in power, 100% FDI was technically possible if it was cleared by the cabinet. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is that nothing seemed to have worked. You have not brought in FDI of any substantial amount despite the policy existing. Uh, well, Bushnu, the reality is that, uh, you know, the experience even after opening up, you know, the uh, defense sector to the private sector and having the FDI up to 26%, uh, it has it, if you look at the numbers, they haven't really been there at all. And I think the reason behind that is very straightforward that, you know, if you look at over the last several years, um, India has been one of the largest arms importers in the world. And uh, during the previous regime of the UPA, you will remember that uh, Mr. A.K. Antony as the defense minister uh, talked about the need to really indigenize uh, production, which is uh, manufacturing of defense equipment in India. And uh, I remember very clearly that in July of 2013, uh, the Commerce Minister, Mr. Anand Sharma, actually proposed 100% uh, FDI in the defense sector. There is logical reason behind that. Uh, and I know there are apprehensions of national security, etc. And I think those uh, adequate safeguards have to be built to even address that. Okay. But on a larger long-term strategic nature, FDI is long-term. FDI is strategic investment. FDI gives you a lot of technical know-how. So, because R&D is a very expensive process. And if you have some very sophisticated technology available, which is called a state-of-the-art technology, and if you can get okay, it through so a foreign you, you collaboration, say that it's not a bad or whether idea. it's a joint venture or a direct <laughs> investment, I think, I think in principle it is a way forward. Okay. India Shukla, has to look at it in the long-term view. Ajay Shukla, where does this leave our own massive indigenous defense base? There's been lots of criticism on its efficiency, uh, but they are making headway in several projects. Where does this leave them? Uh, uh, Vishnu, first of all, it's very important to understand one key issue. Uh, foreign direct investment in defense is not desirable like the way that foreign direct investment is in other spheres. Uh, defense is a strategic sphere. Ideally, uh, if you have a defense industry that is working well, that is producing equipment and so on for the armed forces, you don't need foreign direct investment. So foreign direct investment is a sign of failure. It's a sign of vulnerability. And when the BJP gets up and says that we must have 100% foreign direct investment and the Congress gets up and says, no, we actually uh, allowed 100% foreign direct investment. It only means that neither of them have, to have a clue about what they're talking about, uh, which is not surprising because in the field of defense, we've seen that neither of the two political, the main political parties really know what they're talking about. Ideally, you should allow foreign direct investment in areas, very select areas, where your own defense industrial base is not making headway. So therefore, you allow uh, foreign direct investment. But the way that Nirmala Sitaraman has proposed foreign direct investment to be allowed, which is 100% FDI, it's the surest way of killing off your defense industry of making sure that the companies that are investing hard money uh, into defense that are doing R&D will all be wiped out by the foreign industry. It has to be very selective. It has to be targeted. And that's exactly what they're not doing. Sambit Patra, go ahead. First and foremost, I believe let the policy be tabled. Till then, whatever we are discussing and debating probably is speculative as far as me in my post as spokesperson of Bharati Janata Party is concerned. Two quick points. What my very articulate friend Sanjay Jha from Congress said, I believe he said in a paragraph he could have easily concluded in a sentence by congratulating the Bharati Janata Party. What they could not achieve, what an accidental Prime Minister could not achieve, a determined Prime Minister achieved in a single day. Secondly, I believe what uh, Ajayji was saying to hit, I would 
would react by saying that, uh, well, let the policy be placed. I believe there would be guarded view to everything in the sense uh, whether all of them can come up with 100 percent investment or not is a matter to be seen. I believe 100 percentage only would be for the people who bring in state of art investment into India. It may be 49 <coughs> percentage for others or 74 percentage depending on what they are going to bring on the table as far as India is concerned. But by and large, if at the end of the day, the policy sees that we are getting 100 percentage FDI into the defense. I believe we would only be reiterating what we had stated in our manifesto, and that was reviving the manufacturing sector, that was decreasing or killing the import bill on the large amount of import that we have on defense and thirdly and most importantly increasing the employment generating employment on the land of India which was one of the most important commitments that Mr. Narendra Modi had made to the country. Okay, last two comments Sanjay Jha first then I will come across to Ajay. Sanjay. Yeah, you know I want to just make one simple observation that a hundred percent FDI in defense. I mean, there is no denying that national security that Ajay was mentioning is primordial. You can't really ignore that. But you know, there are enough mechanisms available within the country to make sure that the selectivity that he talked about, or there are certain restrictions in terms of, uh, you know, ensuring that during times of criticality, you know, there is a lot of worry and apprehensions about what happens if there's war and there's an emergency, etc. Can people stop production and so on? But don't forget, there is a flip side argument, Vishnu that if you are importing it, even your foreign partner might stop imp sending those arms and equipment that you might need no, but Sanjay, at a crucial time. Let me so point out how that national security in the UPA government, definitely despite it. any policy, of, despite a, technically a 100% FDI policy, FDI in defense was pretty much impossible. I will tell you why. Some of the requirements were management control of the company must remain in Indian hands with majority representation in the board. The chief executive has to be a resident India, Indian, a licensee can produce only the licensed products and in a sanctioned quantity. It cannot diversify, it cannot enhance produ production without prior sanction. It cannot transfer equity before the expiry of the lock-in period. Even after that, such transfers have to be with the approval of the government. Who were we kidding? Mr. Anthony was not very interested in any FDI, what 100 percent, we're not, I mean, we're, it, it, even 10 percent would have been impossible. Yeah, Vishnu, that's precisely the point we are making here that, you know, end of day, you have to have a pragmatic policy. Uh, if you look at India today, we are actually our defense expenditure is much lower than what China has or what Pakistan has as a percentage of the We're GDP. We're still one of the largest so one will importers of even, weaponry even, in the world till yeah, last it is, year we were and number despite one. That, exactly. Exactly. And which is the point we are making that end of day, this is the point which Mr. Anthony kept making that you have to work, you know, even today you are almost importing 70 percent of your arms okay. and it should be actually be the reverse that we should be having 70 percent through indigenous production and an FDI doesn't mean that all, all ventures will be necessarily 100 percent and many of them will be joint ventures with local okay. partners as okay, well. Okay, so conditions. So there are, you know, commercial okay. considerations of the foreign investor that okay. will also have to be factored in. Okay, Ajay Shukla, last comment from you. Most weapon systems, as you know, in this country or weapons themselves have imported components. What's wrong? if they are now built in factories by foreign companies in India. Uh, Vishnu, uh, the, the unstated assumption of a lot of this seems to be that if you allow 100% FDI in defense, the foreign companies are all going to come and start building their, their uh, complicated defense platforms, bringing state-of-the-art technology. That's not what happens. That's not what's happened anywhere in the world where FDI has been opened. What happens is that the foreign companies come in, manufacture the screws, nuts, bolts and washers over here in this country or in the country that allows FDI uh, and builds all the state of art technology, all the complex systems back in their own system. So when Mr. Antony actually blocked FDI, it was one of the few good things that he did uh, in, a, in a career that was marked by very little success. The question really is, the choice over here really is, when you want to open up manufacture in India, you allow FDI in, but in defense, do you want to treat defense as just another manufacturing field or do you believe that it is a strategic field in which you must protect and cultivate your own defense industry? If you believe the latter, rather than treating it as just another sort of coolie manufacturing skier, uh, field, 
then you protect that industry you don't allow foreign direct investment beyond a point and you very carefully monitor what foreign direct investment you okay. want so i'm sure nirmala sitaraman will learn all these things mr anand sharma in his entire tenure as commerce minister continued to see uh, defense manufacture as just another field of manufacture like auto parts for example but i'm sure nirmala sitaraman will learn okay. uh, and i i i'd be really surprised if they allow 100% okay. fdi in defense okay we've run completely out of time I'd like to thank all of you for joining us this is exciting if it happens ajay says it's bad news if it does but let's see one way or the other if this policy actually gets appro approved it's not happening overnight i'd like to thank all of you for joining me on this program the buck stops thank now. you